The day that social media came around was the day that all these internet trolls were born. So there are these people that like to sit behind a screen, probably eating Doritos. These are goldfish. Probably wearing oversized sweaters. And they just feel the need to pick people apart. I'm just trying to raise awareness here. You scammed people. So to all my Dorito and Cheeto loving oversized sweater wearing sisters, I got another thing coming. Oh no, I'm absolutely terrified. The last two and a half months have been just a whirlwind of spiritual attack. Social media influencer Brittany Dawn facing new legal trouble. After spiritual attack, after spiritual attack. The TikTok star is being sued by the state of Texas. I can see demons, I can see the enemy, I can see Satan. You look familiar. Yeah. Dawn has some 550,000 followers. You look like you stole my daughter's money. Are you kidding me? I ain't kidding you. Yep, you took $200. Hey, this woman took $200 from my daughter. Again, I am sincerely sorry for any harm that I've caused anyone. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm a little sick. Chances are you might know someone in your own life that seemingly lives with no consequences. She spent months, in some cases years, ignoring customers who had reached out to her. They know how to twist a story. I jumped into an industry that had no instruction manual. How to use others and how to go from grift to grift, all with unbelievable ease. Part of you is jealous of them, someone who has no conscience. I commented on one of her pictures and I was like, hey, I sent you emails, I've messaged you, like I'm supposed to be doing this, deleted it right away. And she admitted it. Yes, I was. Who has no regard for the people they hurt or the path of destruction they leave behind them. Um, it actually pushed me back into my eating disorder. Whose cunning smile continues to tell you that they see themselves as above the rules. How nice must it be to be so free of guilt and responsibility, and part of you despises them, because it's people like those who've created so much greed and destruction in the world, who've left a trail of tears from all the people whose caring and kind hearts they've walked all over. We never got anything back. Dangerous advice. A woman who's making money off of women is taking advantage of them. And yet you continue to watch them move through life completely unharmed. How unfair the world is that these people can exist in life with no reparation, with no accountability, with no day of reckoning. And you almost hope that there's a God above watching them so that one day, even if not in this lifetime, they'll pay their dues. So I'm very glad to see her being held accountable. The state of Texas today suing a North Texas influencer. Rarely do I ever cover a subject and think that is a truly unequivocally horrible person. Usually, the people that I cover have at least some redeeming qualities where I can give them the benefit of the doubt in some circumstances. But the subject of this video really tested that for me because in this video, we're covering the many atrocities of former fitness influencer Brittany Dawn, an influencer turned scammer who's now being sued by the state of Texas for her scams. She's tried to rebrand herself many times to escape being held accountable and escape being known as the fitness scammer, but well, her antics continue and now even a young child is involved. So let's unpack the many horrors of Brittany Dawn. I feel like it keeps sounding like I'm saying the many horrors of Brittany Dawn. Hi friends and internet acquaintances, welcome or welcome back to another video on my channel covering controversial influencers and internet figures. 
And if you like those sorts of videos, don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, also give it a like if you want to. Do you like my new background, by the way? I wanted to have a background that looked like a pretty sunset. My husband and I made this background using paint from a paint company founded by my in-laws. It's called JH Wall Paints and this is their lime wash product. It makes that sort of textured look. I'm so proud of my family and this cool awesome company they created. So yeah, I definitely wanted to shout them out and I'll be providing a link to their website in the description of this video and in the pinned comments just to give them a shout out because their paint is really really cool and I highly recommend it not just because they're my in-laws, but also because the product is awesome. Anyways, let's get into the video and talk about the fitness influencer turned scammer, Brittany Dawn. Brittany Dawn, also known as Brittany Davis, is originally from Texas. I grew up here in Texas. Brittany claims to have worked as a veterinarian technician for five years. And uh, I was a vet tech for five years. But her career as a fitness influencer really took off in 2014 and originated in the world of bodybuilding. It was honestly the most exhausting two years on a fitness journey that I ever could have um, imagined. The content that made her the most popular were her transformation and before and after photos. And in that same year, 2014, Brittany started selling personalized meal plans and coaching to her followers using her own physical transformation as the main selling point. And eventually, she formed the company Brittany Dawn Fitness LLC. Brittany Dawn was married to someone previously who was shown sporadically in her content, but she eventually divorced that person and in 2021 married her second husband, Jordan Nelson. This is our couples Q&A. Couples Q&A. A former police officer who worked for Kansas City, Missouri, and was sued by the American Civil Liberties Union for excessive use of force on an unarmed black man. You can take the cop out of the force, but you can't take the cop out of Britney's husband. Throughout her fitness influencing career, Britney Davis amassed hundreds of thousands of followers across YouTube and Instagram with content that was mainly inspirational messages and fitness tips. And Brittany Dawn's social media posts were pretty standard for an influencer at that time. Motivational captions that are unnecessarily long or not that motivating. And that white girl Oompa Loompa filter that makes white people's skin look orange and their hair look white. And of course, as previously mentioned, tons of transformation photos. At one point, Britney had 500,000 followers on Instagram, but has continually lost followers due to her many controversies. On Britney Dawn's website, she marketed customized fitness plans, diets, and coaching for paying clients. Davis is not listed by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation as a licensed dietitian, but her fitness website showed packages for 30, 60, and 90 day workout and diet plans. If you want help getting started with flexible dieting, you can email me right now, beatonfit at gmail.com or check out my website linked below. And the courses from Brittany Dawn Fitness LLC ranged from $92 to $300. The fact that Brittany had a $300 plan, which is more than what most personal trainers charge for someone who works out like Gumby. I also look like Gumby when I work out, but I don't charge charge people fitness plans for my workouts. With Davis marketing her fitness plans as customizable. I was looking for some sort of training, some sort of fitness program. Eventually I followed her, so I went ahead and purchased one of her programs. Brunson paid $250 for a 60-day plan of workouts, a personalized nutrition plan, and access to Dawn by phone. Her business claimed to offer tailored personal fitness plans, nutritional advice, and text messages from Dawn. Complaints of Brittany Dawn Fitness not providing services that were paid for began to emerge in 2015. I think you should all unfollow and stop supporting Brittany Dawn Fitness, and I will tell you exactly why. She has scammed, ripped off, 
stolen really from so many women. Customers alleged that Brittany Dawn's fitness plans were pretty generic and that Dawn never contacted them to initiate their plans. I never heard back from her. We'd go weeks at a time without any communication. We never got anything back other than just, oh girl, you're doing so great. But I'm like, how am I doing great? So I'm not losing weight and inches aren't going anywhere. I commented on one of her pictures and I was like, hey, I sent you emails, I've messaged you, like I'm supposed to be doing this, deleted it right away. And then customers started to find that whenever they would complain about her business practices on her social media and comment asking where their fitness plans were, their comments were deleted from her social media. So people started getting a little angry. Most complaints of Brittany Dawn's fitness plans were because Brittany Dawn was charging a premium for customized plans, but once disgruntled customers started banding together, they realized that the fitness plans were not customized at all. In fact, most of the plans were exactly the same, even when people paid as much as $500 for a special one, and when Britney claimed that there were different levels to her plans for different pricing. And especially with fitness plans, that just seems incredibly dangerous. If someone's coming to you paying a premium because they probably have specialized needs and need a specialized custom fitness plan, and then you give them a generic one, that's extremely dangerous. Kelly Evans says she didn't get what she was promised. I was just, you know, kind of desperate to to do something, to change something, to feel good about myself. Evans, believing she could overcome her body image insecurities as a new mom, says by following Dawn's advice, she was consuming less than a child would each day. She now says she regrets that decision. It was terrible, mind-blowing advice, dangerous advice. A private fitness group was originally created for customers to share their progress, but when those customers connected and started talking with one another, they realized that all of them were given the exact same fitness plan. Facebook group, Brittany Dawn Fitness Complaints. She spent months, in some cases years, ignoring customers who had reached out to her. And rather than providing individualized coaching, Brittany would just give generic feedback, a copy and paste message like, that's my girl, you're killing it. And you've got this, babe. I never got anything back other than just, oh girl, you're doing so great. But I'm like, how am I doing great? So I'm not losing weight and inches aren't going anywhere. Eventually, the feedback got so overwhelming and there were a few call-out videos with even one YouTube prank star confronting Britney and asking why she's scamming people. Excuse me, I have a question. Yeah. You look familiar. Yeah. You look like you stole my daughter's money. She stole $200 from my daughter from her fitness plan, blocked her on Instagram. The complaints were too much for Britney to ignore, so she came out with a YouTube apology video. I apologize to anyone who feels like they got scammed from me. I didn't know what I was signing up for simply because being an influencer and running a fitness influencer business was not really a thing back then. Um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, in the past 24 hours, I have literally received hundreds of threats and that is just absolutely unacceptable at this point. Um, Brittany's explanation for why she continued to give out generic plans was because she grew too fast and because of that couldn't handle so many customers. But first off, she was deleting comments of people complaining and even in her apology video claims that these complaints have been happening for a few years. These claims are coming from years ago after I got launched into a business that took off so fast that I didn't know how to mentally handle it. This started roughly a few months ago. I commented on one of her pictures, deleted it right away. And she admitted it. Yes, I was. And she did nothing. She didn't apologize to them, refund, take her site down until she could handle it more. She did none of that. She just like let it happen. So that's kind of on you at that point. Second off, or secondly, how is it the customer's problem that you're overwhelmed? You're literally potentially putting customers in physical harm 
giving them generic plans when maybe they need customizable ones, but it's somehow their problem that you were overwhelmed and couldn't handle all of this. If you're overwhelmed, there's so many other ways you can handle that. Shut down the site until you catch up. Give people refunds. Change the site so it just offers generic plans. But instead of doing those things, Brittany Dawn just decides to give everyone the same plan and hope no one notices and just let it continue on that way. I jumped into an industry that had no instruction manual. Um, I'm basically going through uncharted territory and I'm doing the best that I can to the best of my ability. Brittany was in uncharted territory. In the fitness industry? You mean the thing that's been around for like decades? Fitness training is uncharted territory? I think customized fitness plans have been a thing. You could have even just paid a personal trainer to come up with the fitness plans and give them to the people that paid you, and you'd still probably make a profit. So I'm not really buying it. And so for most people, this apology video was just too little, too late. Comments read, excuses, excuses. That's all you are with everything coming to light. Just be honest and tell people the truth. You got greedy and instead of adding value to your business, you went for a quick buck. You knew exactly what you were doing. And the only thing you're sorry about is that you got caught. Admit it and give everyone their full refund. Brittany Dawn posting an apology on her YouTube channel. I make mistakes and that's what this video is here to do, to address it, to say that I am sorry. But some of her customers saying that apology just isn't enough. Just overall, it's leaving a really sour taste in my mouth. On top of that, fans became angry that Brittany was seemingly targeting young girls with eating disorders. In an email to Heavy, one woman said, A big issue that the media keeps glossing over is how she also marketed and targeted those with eating disorders. Her posts and hashtags were using trigger words for ED girls, and she lured them with the promise that they could also be healthy. It's absolutely sickening how predatory she was. All the time, Britney would use hashtags like hashtag skip dinner on her fitness posts. Skip dinner? So basically, many fans started to believe that Britney Dawn was posting photos of herself looking skinny, targeting young girls who wanted to look that way with hashtags that are triggering for people with EDs, and then selling her fitness plans to those people, making them believe they can achieve Britney Dawn's look with her plans. At least 14 customers who sought refunds from Davis are people with eating disorders who've come forward. She made it sound so easy. It's like, just reach out. I want to help all of you. It set me back. Um, it actually pushed me back into my eating disorder. One customer said that Davis's social media presence and self-identification as an eating disorder soldier led them to believe that she had some sort of special training to address their condition. One woman who had a restrictive eating disorder told Davis that she wanted to increase her calorie intake, and she said that Brittany ended up giving her a fitness plan that had a significantly lower calorie intake than what she was already eating. These personalized plans were in fact identical to one another and more problematically, they clocked in at a measly 900 calories. I mean, this is scary for anyone, but the fact that a pro ED diet was even given to those who specifically specified their struggle with an eater is scary as f Former customer Angie Bullock wanted to lose weight for her wedding, so she purchased one of Brittany Dawn's fitness plans. The $92 plan promised a diet and cardio workout tailored to Bullock's needs, plus weekly check-ins with Brittany to discuss adjustments. But Bullock told Inside Edition in 2019 that the plans turned out to be generic and was the same plan that Davis gave other women. Feeling duped and frustrated, Bullock wrote to Davis on Instagram, but was ignored and eventually blocked on Britney's social media accounts. And I'm sure that that's really disappointing as well. At least personally, I struggle with consistently working out and finding 
the right plan for myself and my life and my needs. And I would be so excited if I got professional help and found a plan that offered customized fitness plans. Then to find out that the plan is actually super crummy and there's nothing special about it, it's just completely generic, would be super disappointing. Especially when you think someone's there to help you and to give you the right guide and support that you need and then you find out they're taking advantage of you, that sucks and again is super dangerous. For some clients, the effects were very harmful, especially in cases where Davis offered customized fitness plans to clients who truly really needed customized fitness plans and had varying needs. One client who weighed 200 pounds allegedly passed out from a lack of nutrition following the plan given to them by Brittany. One woman almost passed out from inadequate nutrition. In a request another client sent to Davis, the person wrote, I truly need guidance, help, the right information, and support right now. I currently have an ED, horrible body image views. I'm underweight for my height. Great, welcome to the hashtag Team Brittany Dawn family. Brittany allegedly responded, which is super embarrassing for her. And then she later provided that exact same customer with a weight loss plan. A Wisconsin woman who bought the plan back in 2014 even alleges that Brittany's fitness plan caused her to relapse into an ED, which again is why people need customized fitness plans. I followed her customized workout plan and I ended up gaining 9 pounds in the first two weeks, said Corey Reale, an alleged scam victim. In 2019, more than 4,000 people 4,000 people joined a private Facebook group called Brittany Dawn Fitness Complaints. 4,000 people were upset enough about this fitness program that they joined a private Facebook group. First off, how many people paid Brittany Dawn money for customized fitness plans in general if 4,000 people joined this Facebook group? Second off, you made that many people so upset they joined a private Facebook group about you. I don't think even major businesses that are known for being horrible have that many people that upset at them that they join a private Facebook group. And in this Facebook group, users spoke about their horrible experiences and continued to document unsuccessful attempts to obtain refunds. And complaints about Brittany Dawn's fitness program have been posted on the Better Business Bureau site. And and then other people on social media really started to pay attention to what Brittany Dawn was doing. And over 15,000 people signed a petition on change.org to stop Brittany Dawn fitness scams. So Brittany Dawn finally couldn't keep just deleting comments and pretending like nothing's happening. So Brittany Dawn released her controversial apology video. I make mistakes. <laughs> And that's what this video is here to do, to address it, to say that I am sorry. Sorry for scamming you guys for years and pretending like nothing's happening and never giving refunds and deleting your comments. Like, I mean, is that really gonna cut it? Just posting a video and saying, yeah, sorry for that. I think it's a little too late, bud. Britney's apology video was disliked more than 14,000 times back when dislikes showed on YouTube videos. And best of all, the description below her video included links to buy her fitness plan, book an Airbnb with her, or shop her self-tanning products. You know, in case you wanted to look like this. Brittany Dawn also appeared on ABC's Good Morning America to address her fitness scams. Being a fitness influencer is my full-time job. I'm basically going through uncharted territory and I'm doing the best that I can to the best of my ability. I'm using this as a tool to learn and to grow as a professional and to move forward. And also offered people refunds in exchange for signing an NDA, non-disclosure agreement. Basically trying to pressure people into keeping silent. Yeah, I'll give you a refund if you never talk about this illegal thing I did ever 
over, then you can get your money back. We also heard from women who said Dawn agreed to refunds if they signed non-disclosure agreements. Yes, but I was uh, following poor advice from an overreaching lawyer. At this point, Brittany Dawn handled this controversy so poorly that no one wanted anything to do with her. I mean, her reputation was so tarnished from this. Most people get into fitness and especially personal training and posting about their fitness journey to genuinely inspire others and help them. So the fact that she took advantage of thousands and thousands of people, took their money, didn't care about whether her plan would have physically harmed them, and gave them a generic plan that caused so much harm to so many people who trusted her not only to give her their money, but also to put their health and fitness in her hands. And the fact that she basically turned around and pfft, shat on them, it's horrific. And it angered most people in the fitness community to see someone do that because that can really harm someone's outlook on health and fitness. I mean, will those people ever want to get into fitness or get professional help for their fitness ever again? They're saying they offer customized stuff and giving out cut and paste nutrition plans. They're giving out cut and paste workout plans. If you bit off more than you can chew, like I said in previous videos, you apologize and you offer refunds right away. You don't wait on that. This is not only sickening, it's just disgusting and it's rude. And this girl created a following. She sold a product. She made promises. She didn't deliver. So Brittany Dawn was virtually canceled as a fitness influencer. No one wanted anything to do with her and her motivational captions and Oompa Loompa filters. And most of all, no one wanted anything to do with her fitness packages. But Britney was not done on social media yet. Instead of retiring from Instagram or just, you know, putting her phone down, she decided to return to social media in a major way and rebrand herself as a Christian influencer. I'm not really sure what direction this talk is going to go, um, but if you've been following me for a while, you know that my niche has always been fitness and food and health and anything related to that. For years, that was my top priority. That was the end goal. That was the only thing that like truly had um, my, my, my vision. And that is just no longer the case. You have to... Well, maybe not admire, but at least appreciate Brittany Dawn's tenacity. Her need for attention, followers, and likes that can, well, be converted into dollar signs for whatever next business scheme she comes up with is strong enough that when one content style stopped working for Brittany Dawn, she quickly and with ferocity pivoted into a brand new content style. One that I can only assume she thought would bring her enough devoted followers Don't you want devoted followers? who would give her money for whatever next business venture she does. So Brittany pivoted into to a spiritual rebrand. Only weeks after Brittany Dawn's fitness content made headlines, Davis announced in a YouTube video that health and wellness content would no longer be her priority. Fitness and health are no longer my identity. Um, my identity is in Christ. 2019 has ultimately been an entire season of God just pruning my life in order to guide me in the direction that he wanted to take me in the first place. She said she felt that her identity is in Christ and all of her social media profiles changed to completely focus on Christian content. Yeah, that's kind of the point. We were placed on this earth for one reason, and that reason alone is to live and walk in love and have a true intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And that is my sole pursuit now. And now most of her social media posts are Christian messaging and some sort of inspirational biblical content. The exact timeline for this content change is sort of blended and vague, but according to a Reddit user on r slash Brittany Dawn Snark, here's the general timeline for how this change occurred. For the rest of 2019, Brittany still tried to post 
some fitness related content but finally realizes she's not going to be accepted by that community again i ultimately went into a season of hiding when everything happened i didn't know how to handle it and starts her shift to jesus content then in 2020 her full shift to jesus and obsession with church trafficking has truly started. One of Brittany Dawn's followers, Shanna Samol, a 35-year-old mother of four from Reno, Nevada, said the influencer uses the good grace of her religious followers like a weapon to escape culpability. Since Brittany Dawn's social media pivot, she also began to focus more on posting to TikTok. You better watch out for those people that bounce back from everything that was meant to destroy them. Those are God's people and they are not to be messed with. It seems like TikTok is a pretty good way to sort of escape people who already know you. It's like a completely new platform and a completely new audience. So it seems like a lot of social media stars sort of run away from their problems onto TikTok. And since Brittany Dawn's content pivot and her focus on posting on TikTok, she has gained over a million followers on TikTok, which is wild to me. First off, maybe it's just me, but I don't think her content is that good. So somebody asked me today, do I need Jesus to go to heaven? Bro, you need Jesus to go to Walmart, okay? We, we, you need Jesus to just pump gas nowadays. And second off, she was exposed for lying and cheating and stealing money from her followers. And now she's platformed again on an entirely new social media platform, which is just bizarre to me. You can't keep getting away with it! But Brittany Dawn created a good story. For those against her, they see her as a lying, manipulative scam artist who's crafting her next grift. But to those who follow her now, they see her as a reformed follower of God. And they truly believe in the idea of radical forgiveness and that God can save all. The only thing is Brittany's major scam was like less than a year ago and then she fully rebrands. It's not a lot of time for learning and reforming there. Maybe just reformulating your social media strategy, but in fact, most of Britney's current followers don't deny that she scammed people or that she did unchristian things, but they embrace her past as her testimony and story. And Britney leans into this concept constantly to her followers. In fact, her past as a scam artist actually benefited her because it adds to her story. And now she posts captions on social media like, no one is too far gone for Christ. It really is the perfect rebrand because you can virtually null and void all wrongdoings of your past, escape all accountability for them, while still continuing to do the same thing under a different guise. And though Brittany has spoken about attending a Christian college, her religious education credentials aren't entirely clear. She also refuses to talk about her testimony, a religious term that refers to one's journey to Christianity. She references her testimony often, but doesn't share it with her followers. Not that it's anyone's business. I mean, yes, you are selling your spirituality and beliefs as a part of your brand, but you have at least some right to privacy, right? It's not like you blast every single other detail about your life on social media. And now that Brittany Dawn has regained her following and completely rebranded, she's creating yet another business off of her following. Brittany Dawn created a ministry called She Lived Freed, which has its own Instagram page with 161 thousand followers and through this ministry Brittany Dawn started posting what can be described as like spiritual retreats that you must pay to attend you know as Jesus would have wanted I'm on my drive down to the Sheila's Freed weekend retreat which I'm super excited about Brittany Dawn's website description of the retreats reads, In January 2021, we hosted the very first She Lives Freed retreat in Austin, Texas. Since then, we have hosted four more retreats where we have had the honor of watching women 
Walk into Freedom with Jesus. In April, She Lives Freed will be hosting their first one-day event in Fort Worth, Texas. This will be a gospel-centered day with other God-fearing women. I, along with several other powerhouse speakers, will be sharing our hearts on prepping for difficult seasons, staying faithful on your walk with the Lord, and how our seasons of difficulty often lead to our kingdom calling. If you don't know what your kingdom calling is, then you're coming to the right place. She Lives Freed is a space where all are welcome. Every past has redemption, and each story has a God-given purpose. Cost $125. This price will cover your entry and dinner. We will have vendor booths, so bring some cash if you want to buy their products, giveaways, a coffee cart, and more. Please keep in mind that this one-day event does not include your travel or stay. However, we do have room blocks at the AC Hotel and Aloft in Fort Worth. For her one-day conference in April, Brittany Dawn is charging $125 per person, and the event's terms of service say that it's non-refundable. And a lot of people feel like this is a lot of money to charge for basically a weekend seminar from someone with no seminarial training. Seminarial? Seminarial? Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And who only a year or two ago scammed thousands of people with a fitness product. I feel like she is still scamming and taking advantage of vulnerable women. I'm completely disgusted with her recent behavior, said a Christian woman named Kat who is a fan of Davis's before finding out about her previous fitness scamming issues. She's basically charging women money to be baptized, which is absolutely disgraceful. Jesus already paid the price for our salvation, and she's making a profit out of it. And in the past, Brittany Dawn has charged upwards of $600 per person for another She Lives Freed event that was three days of speakers, baptism, and lodging. And on top of that, Brittany continues to sell merch like Bible highlighters, self-tanner, protein cookies, teeth whitener, false eyelashes. She even sells a $32 cotton t-shirt on her ministry's website with the word unapologetic written on it. The irony. <laughs> At her events, she sold Bibles hand-painted with flowers for $60 to $97, tie-dyed jean jackets proclaiming Yahweh, not my way, and you can't cancel me stickers. Brittany Dawn weaved a good story to her followers, a reformed scammer and who dressed in unmodest ways, now saw the error of her ways and turned to Christ. These are the stories that inspire many Christian people. And to build her following, Brittany Dawn didn't need to know the Bible in and out. She just needed to give vague Instagram captions with the right phrasing and calling cards to Christian people, with just enough believability in it for those of her same faith to believe she truly reformed, all with the same Instagram aesthetic that she had before. Just this time she's wearing wide-brimmed hats and jeans instead of fitness clothing. During one of Britney's conferences, at one point she took the microphone and said, you can't cancel what God has called. You can try all you want, but the power of the blood has already overcome it. And that's the truth. You can't cancel me. And she's right. She harmed thousands of people with a fitness scam and she can't be cancelled. She now has thousands of women who are buying what she's selling from this Christianity rebrand. And Britney's social presence is thriving more than ever. And I guess this is the part of the video where I brutally share my opinion. Of course, people can change. They can find spirituality, some sort of clarity, and radically reform. But in my opinion, I don't think Britney has. Maybe it's because I'm a skeptic at heart. But looking through Britney Dawn's TikToks, most of her content is extremely performative. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson.
and the same sort of egocentric content she's posted in the past. I tried to get so much validation from social media for years, and there's still so many people out there doing that. <laughs> The only thing that changed is her sort of social media identity. She's still selling courses, now it's just Christian conferences instead of fitness plans. And again, are topics that she's not really an expert in. Most of her social media posts have this sort of look at me air about them. Look at me being a good Christian. Look at me doing this charitable thing. Look at me before I was a Christian and now that I'm a Christian. None of it is genuinely helping people. Most of the inspirational quotes she posts you can find by walking into a home goods. I think it's really important to note that this entire social media presence is mainly helping her and her only. Even when she's posting heartfelt baptism videos, they're all recorded at her retreat, which people paid to attend. The point is, Brittany Dawn is still acting selfishly, and it angers me, infuriates me for some reason, that Brittany Dawn has been able to win over the hearts and wallets of so many people who are probably good people and want just to find a spiritual leader and a good group of spiritual women. And instead, they find Brittany Dawn who asks them to pay money for retreats. And most of all, I think personally, and this is just me theorizing here, social media is a tool that Brittany Dawn uses to constantly fuel her own ego. When she receives hate, she makes a post victimizing herself. Do they like you? She's also constantly posting about her looks still. You rebranded from fitness content and you're still posting about how you look, still posting body transformations, but with a Christian twist. And I'm sorry, but isn't vanity and pride a sin? A quote from Kelsey Weekman in an article about Brittany Dawn's conference in BuzzFeed summarizes how I feel pretty well. For an influencer wanting to rebrand themselves after a scandal, religious content taps into the good faith of forgiving people and doesn't require years of schooling, just passion and confident delivery that you've received messages directly from God. And at the end of the day, it feels like Britney took advantage of those with good faith and kindness. But Britney, Britney, greedy Britney. But even so, Britney continues to run into controversy with an overall theme of greed and selfishness. Throughout 2021, Britney documented her efforts to help a homeless man named James. Oh my god, look who we found. James. James! What's up, dude? Hey, we're gonna talk to you for a second? Yeah, please, I'm walking. Remember me from yesterday? Yeah, I was walking to that church right now. Yes, we're Bible. Whoa! Which ended up mainly helping her because, let's be real, helping a homeless person and posting it on social media is good hashtag content. I know some people prefer different terms for homeless, like unhoused person. To avoid all of that, for the rest of this chapter, I'm just going to refer to the man as his name, James, because I feel like that's the most respectful way of describing the incident. Reportedly, James had visited a church to donate the last 15 cents he had left as a sign of goodwill. God is so good. This man showed up at church yesterday just to tithe 15 cents. 15 cents. Like... Brittany was so moved by this gesture that she provided James with a hotel, food, and clothes. Got uh, James hooked up with a comfy bed. He's in the shower right now. We got him a new Bible, a composition notebook so he can journal, some food. Got him all new clothes, some drinks for him. But unfortunately, this 
supposedly kind gesture might have been a ruse and again, all for hashtag content. In late December of 2022, Harriet Bearholtz, aka Leave It to Harriet, posted a TikTok that details the lies of Brittany Dawn's interaction with James. So back in 2021, Brittany adopted, abducted, trafficked, many words for what she did, uh, for a homeless man, an adult homeless man named James, who she's posted about all over her Instagram, all over her TikTok, um, completely infantilized, completely talked down to. Harriet talks about a GoFundMe campaign that Brittany and her husband started for James. Uh, Brittany and her husband set up a GoFundMe account claiming that they're going to help this man get drug and alcohol rehabilitation at an inpatient facility in, I believe, Ohio. Um, she raises $25,000. I just wanted to hop on here real quickly to give a little update on James in less than 10 hours raised, hit our goal. We hit our goal. This money is gonna change his life. The intention behind this GoFundMe was to raise money for James to receive treatment for his addiction at a rehab facility. And the campaign raised more than $25,000 while it was up. According to Harriet, however, the facility that James went to was a free Christian clinic with no medical experts on staff, and one that's been accused of subjecting its inpatients to forced labor. The facility they end up sending him to is a free, pro bono, state-run Christian rehab facility where there's not really doctors, there's people making you do uh, like forced labor. This is a free like facility. It doesn't cost anything. At most, Brittany and her husband spent a couple hundred dollars on maybe flights and a hotel for the night for this guy while transporting him to this facility. After having spent little of the money raised for James, Brittany reportedly cut ties with James after his rehab was completed. They raised $25,000 in a GoFundMe. When James, this man, got out of rehab, he heard that there was money set up for him. He tried to contact Brittany and her husband to get this money, and they blocked him, and he has never heard from them again. On top of that, in 2021, Brittany posted photos of a very expensive-looking wedding she had. And of course, there's no correlation confirmed. It hasn't been officially confirmed that Brittany took this GoFundMe money and spent it on her wedding, but it makes sense why social media users might conclude that, considering her fraudulent past. A couple months later, Brittany and her husband booked expensive wedding venues and threw a lavish yet deeply tacky wedding. People are just, you know, putting two and two together and realizing that money they raised for a homeless man most likely went towards paying for her wedding. This venue is incredible. My video footage doesn't seem to do these details justice at all. Another thing that I love about Lazy as Hacienda is that the grooms also have their own groom suite or man cave as I call it, which is so perfect for Jordan. I have a couple little surprises up my sleeve for him in here that he doesn't know about. Is flashy? No, that's Spike. Oh, hi Spike. That's Grandpa. Aww, oh, he's so sweet. Oh my goodness. Overall, it's safe to say that this venue was everything we were hoping to find, and we are so excited for our wedding day. And worst of all, a TikTok video posted from Fun Mama X where they interview James, and he confirms that he was never informed of the GoFundMe. Hi. Hi, James. Uh, hi. Hey, um, I'm. Hello. Is it okay if I record this for the people who don't think it's you? Okay. Awesome. Well, it's nice to officially see you. They all have been dying to hear from you for the past, like, year. Oh. <laughs> so. I don't even know. I didn't. I was kept in the dark on everything. Okay. I just want to talk to Jordan because I didn't, I didn't want to deal with money. I didn't know there was this whole account. I didn't know any of that. So I thought he was doing it out of his pocket. I wasn't sure. And then um, everybody showed me that there was, like, a fundraiser and, so you had you had no idea about any of that they were funding for you and that you were supposed to get that money. Yeah, I found out later. They were talking to my family, but never got any. I guess they wanted receipts and all that for how much was there and what's accounted for, and they're having problems with that. Yeah, yeah, because they're. I don't know. 
As far as we can see, yeah, it was $25,000 was raised for you. Um, and $25,000 was, was raised on the GoFundMe. And I can send you this, uh, the screenshot of that too. And from what you say, you only got 6,000. So, um, we're trying to figure out what happened to the rest of that and hold them accountable because what they did is not okay. And had only received $6,000 out of the $25,000 raised for him. Brittany and her husband recently addressed the controversy in a video. What's up, everybody? Hey, um, it's kind of ridiculous that we have to do this, but we're going to film a video about James. We're going to explain some of the just outright lies. Where they also interview James's sister, who seemingly goes to bat for them to give them credit, saying that they found her brother in a horrible state and she's grateful that they helped him at that time when he really needed it. When Brittany and Jordan met James, he was probably at an ultimate low because my brother had been on the road for 16 days. Whatever you call it, whether it be God, divine intervention, call it a scam, I don't care. My brother was dehydrated, malnourished, and homeless. Anybody in their right mind would have done what Jordan and Brittany did that day. Whether it was $25,103 that got my brother to where he is now, or $10, or $100 to put him on a bus somewhere, what was done saved his life. Period. Which is undoubtedly a fair point. James's sister seemingly confirms that they did not give James any of the money that was raised. But from her perspective, that was actually a benefit to James because at that point in his life, he wasn't using money the right ways. The answer from myself, as well as James's father, was whatever you do, do not give it to him because at that point whenever james would get his hands on money it would not be to buy those cigarettes and then britney's husband says that they had permission to manage james's finances during that time we had full permission from james from you and from his father to manage his finances during that time but i gotta say with Britney's track record, you're saying you raised $25,000 for someone and then said, I'm going to just hold on to that though. I'll hold on to that for a little bit. Let me manage those finances for you. And none of it was used for personal reasons. You had an extra $25,000 in your bank account, but you didn't use any of it for personal reasons. Like if your entire purpose was to hold on to James's money so he doesn't use it in the wrong ways, maybe give it to his family then. It seems like James's sister and James's father, from what his sister has said, are really supportive and there for James and want what's best for him. So maybe give it to them. Don't just take the money yourselves and then sit here and act like you did nothing wrong. This is ridiculous um, how far that this has gotten. This is nothing short of a fictitious witch hunt. I'm sorry, but I call BS. And on top of that, how much did you profit off of content featuring James? Thank you for all the prayers and the donations. Uh, we'll keep you posted on the latest with James. So I want to respect James and his privacy, but I don't know if y'all can hear this, but he's literally praying and just full of joy while he's in the shower. Not only did you keep the $25,000 you raised from James, but you also used him for content to show how charitable you are and how incredible you are. Like you could have kept that to yourself and just helped someone, but instead you posted about him consistently throughout 2021 to gain like, I don't know, sympathy, a sympathy card. But then not only did you profit from him, but you held on to the money you raised that was meant to help him and sent him to a free facility. And you have the audacity to make a video acting like people have no right to be upset at you for that. It led a lot of people to be concerned for this random person that Britney roped into yet another scheme. Britney has also been heavily criticized for what many view as cruelty and neglect towards her animals. Disclaimer for this chapter, this could be kind of an upsetting and triggering topic, 
if you're triggered by topics that have to do with animals and neglect and cruelty towards animals, then I would recommend maybe skipping this chapter. In 2021, Brittany Dawn posted a YouTube video titled, My Heart is Shattered. My Dog Died in a Hit and Run. This is probably going to be the shortest video that I've ever made on my YouTube channel and I'm going to try to do it without breaking down completely. In the video, she said her and her husband, Jordan Nelson, found her dog Brody lying in the street after they returned home from running errands. Yesterday, um, Jordan and I had to run to Lowe's. We had to run to Home Depot. I don't even remember which one. Lowe's. And, uh, we were just having to run some errands and I left the pups out. Running up to the road has never been an issue for them. And yesterday we came home after we got the stuff we needed at Lowe's and um, turned to the corner onto our street. And I, uh, I thought I saw Brody the closer we got to our driveway, but I, I, I was like, that's weird. Like, why would he be at now? And then I realized it was Brody and um, I realized he wasn't moving and he wasn't standing. Dawn said that although she worked as a veterinarian technician for five years, she couldn't bear to see her pet in that state. Like I wish, I just wish I could unsee what I had to see. He got hit so hard. She said the dog was still breathing even though it got hit so hard by a vehicle. So according to her, her husband brought her into their home where she stayed while he shot the injured dog. And poor Jordan, like he had to, he had to rush me inside. Poor Jordan had to do that for Brody so that, <laughs> so that he wouldn't suffer. And um, there was no saving him. It was so bad. And although most of the comments under her social medias about the incident were supportive of her, Dawn has received criticism for, I don't know, not taking the dog to the vet, not seeing if there's a way to fix the dog's injuries. One user tweeted they can't even fathom how Don let Nelson shoot the dog instead of taking it to a vet. And another Twitter user noted that Don made this video the same day her dog died and then monetized it, which again is just weird influencer behavior. Is it hot? I feel like most average people, the day their dog dies, would not make a video about it, post it, monetize it. Like, that wouldn't go through someone's brain. Like, this is a really good thing to get on camera. I just think that's such a weird phenomenon that's happened with the rise of social media. Mm. Of course, I spill soup on my dress. That's what I get for talking while drinking soup. Eating soup or drinking soup? I'm trying to bowl. Yes. This is dangerous. And this isn't the only time Dawn has been accused of mistreating or neglecting her pets. In fact, there is an entire timeline of Dawn's many pets and mistreating them that was documented by a user Chicken Gary. Dawn's first dog is Coco who seems to be still with Brittany Dawn, or what Reddit users of Brittany Dawn snark refer to her as B-Dong. Brittany Dawn adopts Kita the Husky. Kita seemed to be around for a year or two before disappearing. Some recall that she sent Kita to training and Kita never returned. In 2018, Brittany adopts Harlow. Harlow made a brief appearance in Brittany Dawn's videos with no follow-up or mention of where she went. It was suspected that she went back to the breeder. In 2019, Brittany Dawn adopts Nico. People noticed that Nico was gone for a while before Brittany fessed up. In April of 2019, Brittany Dawn gives up Nico. Brittany sends Nico to training. She never took him back, supposedly left him in the care of the trainers, and the trainer assumed responsibility and provided him with a suitable home. What? Who does that? Who just expects someone else to find a home 
for their dog. Brittany Dawn also monetized this explanation video. Questions going on about where Nico is. Nico is in training right now. I don't know how much longer he's gonna be. He's been there for quite some time though. Here's a video about another reason why I'm a human being. I just abandoned my dog and made someone else take responsibility for them. August 2019, Brittany adopts Brody. At one point during Brody's short life, through neglect of his grooming needs, he suffered a skin condition. This caused a permanent large black patch of discoloration on his back where his skin had been affected, which is not something a vet tech would allow to happen to their dog. In December of 2020, Brittany Dawn adopted Remington. Somewhere around 2019 to 2020, Brittany adopted Harley the horse and was exposed for neglect of Harley. She refused to pay for a vet to see him and missed multiple months of boarding fees. She threatened to write negative reviews if the boarding facility made her pay. The owner did not let it slide. Then, Recently, as mentioned, in 2021, Brody was neglectfully left out alone, and her husband shot and killed him in the street after he was hurt. Then, in December 2021, they adopt another dog named Oakley. Her other animals, Coco and Remy, appear to be living at her parents' ranch, and it's unknown if Brittany has gotten a proper fence for the dog after her previous incident with Brody. And I think this is an important thing to talk about because, well, how people treat animals, in my opinion, says a lot about who they are as a person and how they view all life to a certain extent. Speaking of which, here's my animal. But that's just my opinion on the matter. And of course, it's important to say that we'll never know the full story of what happened with Brittany and her many pets. And this is all an especially important topic because in 2022, Brittany started posting about her hopes of fostering and becoming a foster mom. Getting to be a foster mom has just been game changing. Like it's humbling, it's exhausting, it's sacrificial, like all the beautiful things that motherhood is, right? Sorry, she's showing you her booty hole. <laughs> Again, before going into this topic, I want to make a disclaimer. On the topic of foster parenting, there can be many different outlooks. And because I'm not heavily involved with it, I'm not heavily involved with social work, foster care, or adoptive parenting, nor do I have any real life experiences in those matters, I'm not going to share my opinion on the topic. I don't even have the right to have an opinion on the topic and instead I'm only going to discuss what others with that experience have expressed about this topic. So if you have experience in this area, I'd love to know your thoughts on this entire situation. In 2022, Brittany Dawn decided to become a foster parent. According to Cornell Law, a foster parent is an adult licensed by the state to care for a foster child or children. Most foster parents provide temporary care after a child is removed from their home due to their parent or guardian's inability to provide adequate care. Foster children most commonly reunite with their parent or guardian after those underlying issues are resolved, or find permanent placement with family members or non-relatives who previously knew the child. However, some foster parents adopt their foster children, which legally makes the child a part of the adoptive family while severing their legal relationship with the biological family. Foster parents must also be willing to work with child welfare workers and other providers. Further, foster parents are asked to remain cognizant of the fact that foster placement is likely temporary. As such, foster parents must try not to disparage their foster children's biological parents. So, Brittany Dawn and her husband decided to become foster parents, which would be an admirable thing if it wasn't for the fact that she completely exploited her fostering journey on social media. Uh, 
Get ready with me as I prepare for our next foster care placement. I was literally at a coffee shop getting some work done and I got two phone calls and our whole world just changed. That's how quick it happens. I'm not sure if there's a better term for this, but I'd call what Brittany did, parading the fact that she's now a foster parent, posting about a new child coming in, calling herself a foster mom, and documenting all the charitable things she's doing. It feels like the same vein of posting about James for content. And I would call that performative goodness. Because why do you need to set up a tripod, find the perfect angle, and record yourself with this brand new foster baby. I love this one Reddit post where someone edited in a tripod so that you can really visualize how Brittany is setting up and curating all of her foster mom videos. Why does social media need to know everything about this foster baby? Can't you do good things without posting it to social media? Can't you have a foster child without posting them to social media? What outraged people the most throughout Brittany Dawn's fostering journey and foster postings, first off, just the thought that she was exploiting a literally newborn baby who had to be separated from their mother and from their family for social media brownie points. On top of that, a lot of people in social work were upset at the fact that Brittany Dawn was calling herself a mom and acting like she was replacing the role of the baby's real parents, who the baby ended up reuniting with at the end of 2022. Okay, before I get into this bull I wanna let you know I'm speaking to you from a perspective as someone who's previously a foster parent, adoptive parent. I've been a foster care worker, a CPS worker, and a foster home licensor. And so when I see foster parents like this, I am so fucking infuriated. Especially when you are performatively showing this child all over the fucking internet. Your job, is to be a placeholder in order to help get that child back to their mother. That child's mother has just experienced one of the most devastating things in her entire life. And you're parading her child all over the internet. You're exposing this child to the entire goddamn internet as if it's a trophy for you. Were you in this for the clout? In one TikTok, Brittany details the joys and sorrows of being a foster mom, where she says that the hardest thing is knowing that you're gonna have to say goodbye, which of course I can imagine is a very hard thing. It definitely takes a lot of strength and limited pride and ego to be able to ethically foster parent and take in a child and help them reunite with their family. But what people became upset about is the fact that Brittany never really acknowledged that she's just a temporary caretaker, whose main role is to reunite the child with their family. And instead, Brittany seems to be acting like she's a replacement for this child's family. Comments on her TikTok read, Caretaker and mother are different. You should be telling that child about their mother. You can love the child, but you're not the biological mom. You still need to honor the biological family. And others responded to Dawn in their very own TikTok videos, accusing her of exploiting a child that is not hers and failing to acknowledge the baby's biological mother, which I can't even imagine the rage I would feel if I was going through a dark moment in my life at a time when I was pregnant, my baby gets taken away from me until I can recover from that, and I find out that that baby was put in the hands of someone who's making constant social media posts and videos about them. The rage I would feel. Dear Brittany Dawn, you're not a mother. TikToker at Dula Danielle Tilly said, keep my nose out of this situation but honestly it keeps coming up on my for you page and it's really making me sick to my stomach dear Brittany dawn you're not a mother 
You're not. You are a foster mother. Harsh reality, I know. I'm really sorry for all of the infertility you guys have struggled with and all of that. But at the end of the day, that child has a mother. That child has a mother who is struggling right now. And as Christians, you're sitting here blasting this child on social media as if it's yours, calling yourself the mother, posting this child online in the first place as a mother, I would feel so extremely violated if in five, 10 years from now, I end up in a really bad place in my life and my children get taken away from me and I find out they're being exploited. If you wanna prove how good of a godly foster parent you are, you would keep that child and its business offline as well as all of your future children. User Crunchy Teen Mama also slammed Dawn saying that Dawn's exploitation of the child was unfair to the biological mother, who's most likely dealing with postpartum and trying her best to better herself so she can reunite with her baby. Somewhere out there, there's a mother that just gave birth to the child in this video. Possibly dealing with postpartum anxiety or depression, all while trying to heal herself so she can have her baby back. Brittany, if you're seeing this by any chance, I have one question for you. Since you seem to think that this whole thing was God's plan, do you think it was in God's plan for you to be profiting so much off of this? Do you think God intended for you to get so much clout from this? Personally, I don't think so. And in many ways, Brittany is trying to monetize this child and her foster journey on social media and make her foster child and her foster parent role a whole part of her brand. The one thing people were giving Brittany Dawn credit for is blurring the child's face in photos. But the thing is, that's just a stipulation decreed by the U.S. Children's Bureau for foster parents in their social media rules. She has to do that legally as a foster parent. It was not something that she did out of respect for the foster child or the foster child's family and their privacy. It's just something she's required to do to continue being a foster parent and to continue posting about being a foster parent. And Brittany found another way to capitalize off of being a foster parent, and that's by including affiliate links on her posts to promote products like baby monitors. If people click the link, Dawn gets a commission. Now, none of this is currently illegal. It's just seen as morally and ethically wrong. But legally, there's very few safeguards for protecting children and foster children of exploitation by their parents or foster parents through social media. For example, Brittany Dawn even posted the specific reason why the foster child ended up in her and her husband's care, which seems like a total violation of privacy for that child and their family. Imagine growing up and finding out the person who fostered you for less than a month posted you constantly as a newborn and even shared the reason why you were in foster care and what your family was going through. The anger and annoyance of it all is just unfathomable. Fathomable? Yeah, it, it, that's just, it should not be a thing. This shouldn't be allowed. In early January, the child was returned to their family, and Brittany made a post talking about how heartbreaking it was for her as a foster parent. Again, leading critics to believe that she's posting about fostering to gain sympathy brownie points. On the subreddit r slash Brittany Dawn Snark, there was a heartbreaking but important post by a Redditor that detailed their own struggles as a new mom who was coming out of a dark place and how they came out of that dark place working as hard as possible to give their children the best life they could have. I'll link the post in my resources if you want to read but at the end, they say something really important, which I think sums up this entire thing. So honestly, F you, Brittany. How dare you take the worst day of a person's life for your online clout and savior complex bullshit? How dare you exploit that child and mother 
who just lost each other for your own personal gain. And a commenter under this post said, Brittany is the worst kind of judgmental Christian. which should be a completely selfless act has already slipped into saviorism. As a foster parent, she signed up to provide love and support until reunification can occur. She has no business passing judgment, and she should be deeply ashamed that she's capitalizing on this baby's experience in any way. And even the Dad Challenge podcast spoke out about Brittany fostering. He said, I know this is a hardline stance, but if you're an influencer like hashtag Brittany Dawn, you need to be denied the ability to foster or adopt kids because those kids don't get the choice to have their whole lives shared on the internet. This should go without saying. Stop allowing influencers to adopt or foster kids. Hashtag kids aren't content. And not only is Brittany Dawn being a foster parent questionable because of her shady past of scamming and exploiting people, but on top of that, her husband, Jordan Nelson, who she married in 2021, also has a shady and questionable past. A Reddit post reads, Surely there are laws that keep them from fostering. He was sued for assault. And it's true. That actually happened. In 2013, the ACLU sued Jordan Nelson because as a police officer for Kansas City, he used excessive force on a black man. I don't want to detail out exactly what happened because the details are gruesome and upsetting, so I'll include a link to the report about this in my resources, which are linked in the description. But you just wonder how Brittany and Jordan passed a background check with all of this in their record. To make matters even worse, Jordan and Brittany recently fostered a new baby who is black, which made a lot of people very concerned. But according to Brittany, she passed the background check no problem. On top of everything else in this cluster of online presence, the same year that Brittany started fostering, she was also sued by the state of Texas for her fitness scams and the news that came out about them all the way back in 2019. Will Britney finally get what's coming to her? Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton filed a lawsuit against Brittany Davis and her business, alleging the Fort Worth-based influencer engaged in deceptive acts by misleading thousands of consumers with the promise of personalized nutritional guidance and individualized fitness coaching. It further alleges that Davis sold weight loss plans to people who told her they had eating disorders. As the complaint reads, in the state of Texas v. Brittany Dawn Davis, by posting about her own experience with eating disorders and in the same breath encouraging women to buy her fitness plan, Davis was representing, explicitly or implicitly, that she had knowledge or training to address eating disorders when she did not. Now to popular social media influencer Brittany Dawn facing new legal trouble. The TikTok star is being sued by the state of Texas. The state of Texas today suing a North Texas influencer accusing her of deceptive practices. Her name is Brittany Dawn Davis. It also lists complaints from customers including how one woman almost passed out from inadequate nutrition. The law the lawsuit seeks to bar Brittany from selling personalized exercise and nutrition advice and demands between $250,000 to $1 million in penalties and fees. The state is seeking between $250,000, upwards of a million dollars in penalties, as well as court fees. On top of that, in 2020, Brittany received more than $20,000 in forgivable paycheck protection loan money. Again, just anything she can take advantage of, it feels like. The subreddit r slash Brittany Dawn Snark has covered a lot of information on the trial, so I would definitely recommend going there if you want updates on how the trial goes. Five months ago, there was a court hearing for Brittany's case that the subreddit covered, TLDR. Brittany sits there silently the whole time. Her lawyer explains that she won't be speaking when they all introduce themselves. The plaintiff, representing the state of Texas, gets to talk first and explains their purpose. Brittany scammed consumers and earned over $1 million from this. 
In this case, we are alleging that the defendants have made over a million dollars in the sale of online fitness packages to thousands of consumers throughout the country with the promise of personalized nutritional guidance and fitness coaching. Brittany earned over $1 million from her fitness scam that was seemingly a total sham from the very start as it seems all the way back in 2014 she never gave people customizable plans and she made one million dollars one million dollars the plaintiff explains that they've given numerous deadline extensions for britney to provide their evidence for the discovery process but despite this britney's team failed to be timely and failed to produce complete answers to their requests the night before they dumped off 10,000 documents at 11 pm and finally entered the defendant's response but none of the documents included the list of clients that the plaintiff requested then britney's lawyer talks he says they can produce the documents but it's going to take a long time the judge asks why does it take so long if all these transactions were online. Britney's lawyer says, we haven't been able to give this list of clients because Britney is locked out of her PayPal account, aka she was most likely kicked off of PayPal for, you know, being a scammer. The lawyer also says that Britney can't hire a company to collect data for her, seemingly saying that she's running out of money, even though she made one million dollars. From this fitness scam, the judge says, I don't want to give you even 30 days to finish this. Britney's lawyer says, we need more than 30. How about 45? Plaintiff, we asked for 10, but if judge is looking at 10 to 30, we're grateful for any sort of firm deadline. Judge says, okay, produce the documents by the end of September. They are, they are denying the allegations of, of the state. They're denying these violations. And one such example is basically saying, Your Honor, that all these consumers received the coaching that they were promised. Well, Your Honor, that's against the greater weight of hundreds of consumer consumers who have come forward to the state and said, we didn't receive the coaching we had requested. Under the DTPA, in order for me to be able to prove to, to Your Honor and to a jury the nature, extent, and gravity of the violations, it is essential, it is necessary that the state receive these documents and these evidence. Brittany Dawn's jury trial. Why is that so hard to say? Brittany Dawn's jury trial. <laughs> is set for March 6th of 2023, aka very soon. And so, fingers crossed, Brittany Dawn may be getting some real major accountability for all the damage that she's done, which is weirdly hard to come by for an influencer scammer. Usually, when an influencer scams their following, there's very little accountability that they ever receive. So for this one, it's really nice to see a story end with real, actual, legal action. Influencers have the power to do major damage to people financially, especially to their own followers who want to support them. And finally, it seems like the law is starting to wake up to that fact, as more and more influencers are starting to become legally accountable for their crimes. Brittany Dawn has been one of the many many people who seemingly skate through life unharmed, unaware or unconcerned of the damage they cause in their wake. But everyone has a day when their luck runs out, when their troubles catch up with them. And now, the future of Brittany Dawn is unknown. Will she be able to wiggle her way out of this legal mess, find new grifts, fly off into the sunset on the backs of kind and forgiving people? Or will her day of reckoning finally come?